Good morning, friends. This is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cooks United Methodist Church, uh, and it is a beautiful Monday morning here in Wilson County. Um, I apologize for our devotional time needing to take a shift today, and many of you uh, will join us much later. Hey, Miss Ruth, good morning to you. Um, I uh, had to get up a little earlier today, and I've done my best to honor my body uh, by getting a little exercise, um, and uh, because I've got things going on this afternoon, and so I want to ask uh, you again, those of you who will be watching, hey, good morning, Miss Pam. Um, I... Um, I just ask you to keep the Carrierville United Methodist Church congregation and their staff uh, in your prayers. Um, they have a funeral this afternoon that uh, will be uh, wonderfully difficult to celebrate. And, um, and uh, the fact that it is still the Easter season is not lost on me. I hope it's not lost on you either. Good morning, Stacy. Um, yesterday, uh, in the lectionary text, uh, we uh, encountered Thomas's story. Uh, we even talked last week a little bit about Thomas's story and about his doubting, but I want us to focus today on what it must have been like for um, fearful disciples, not not clear about what to make of uh, their experiences over those last days of Jesus's life, uh, for them to have witnessed the betrayal, for them to get caught up in that themselves. Whether they betrayed Jesus or not, most of them ran. Uh, and here they are worried to death that the same thing that happened to Jesus could happen to them. And so um, the first time they were all gathered behind a locked door, Thomas wasn't with them. The second time he was, and Jesus walked right through um, what they intended would keep the threat, keep the danger out. And that's often what it's like for us. We build walls or we construct some sort of safety something around us uh, and it typically hurts us as much as it protects us and Jesus walks right through and so I was uh, reminded last night when we were finishing our second uh, worship service at Cook's uh, we had said the word peace or the phrase peace be with you so many times that it was finally beginning to sink in and so I, want, I got to thinking about the times in scripture that I had encountered uh, that phrase or when I had learned something new about peace. And I want to direct us toward um, the letter to the Christians who lived in Thessalonica, uh, the second letter, the third chapter, and the 16th verse. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. In every way, the Lord be with you all. It's so easy to hear that kind of greeting or that kind of blessing or to even offer it and think little about those words. But what a powerful blessing it is. And, and what I mean by powerful blessing is that there are several things uh, in this passage, uh, in this verse, that uh, we take for granted. I dropped my book. I'm sorry. Just hang on one second. Um, and so um, a couple of things I want to share with you. First of all, the Greek word there, peace, is irony, uh, and it's similar, uh, almost exact, to the Hebrew understanding of the word shalom. So when you look peace up uh, from the Hebrew text, the Old Testament text, you'll typically find, almost always find the word shalom, and that's the exact same uh, notion, the same idea 
in the Greek language, uh, which is the language of the New Testament. And it doesn't just mean peace like absence of conflict. What it means is health, welfare. Uh, it's when all the essential parts are not only joined together, um, it's this notion of wholeness. And so God's gift of peace is a wholeness, like everything is right. And specifically here in this verse, it does mean wholeness. And so when we um, understand that it is the Lord of peace who is offering this gift, the Lord uh, is a is a phrase uh, that denotes authority, and Kyrios, Lord, in the Greek means the person who is exercising absolute ownership rights. The Lord of this land, the Lord of this territory, the Lord of this and so when we refer to Jesus as the Lord of all we're talking about absolute and ultimate authority um, and about uh, ownership um, and so um, ownership we can take that as um, the notion of slavery it indicates that we that we are owned by Jesus but how much more beautiful it is to think of belonging to Jesus because of our belief and there is this exchange of of goodness and wholeness that's what Jesus does for those who subject themselves to him and Jesus becomes the author then authority becomes uh, the author of the goodness in our life the author and the promoter in this case of peace I also think we've got to understand this um, blessing here in this letter um, doesn't just throw the words all around in an empty way. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. Um, the double positive there. Um, it, circumstance is another good word um, that you often read in translations of this verse uh, in every way in every manner in every path um, the the connotation in the language and the way it is used really means in every circumstance in every means in every way so to think about what those, um, what those disciples must have experienced just hours after the building and the onslaught of horror and terror, watching what happened to Jesus and the very thing that Jesus brings to them in that locked up room, both times a week apart, was peace, wholeness health, welfare. That's the same thing that Jesus, the Lord of all peace, will bring to us, no matter what our circumstances are. We wake to the news today of another um, shooting that involves police uh, in Minnesota. Many of us here in Wilson County have heard the bulletin about an active shooter uh, in a subdivision in Lebanon. It, whether it's across our nation or in our own backyard, there are plenty of things happening that would disturb or threaten our peace. Yet Jesus walks right through uh, our defenses, the things that we have put in place, uh, the doors we've shut, the walls we've erected between ourselves and others and uh, and experiences in the outside world. Jesus is no respecter of those boundaries and walks right in to pronounce peace. Y'all, the challenge for us to understand is that our resurrected Lord brings resurrection life into places of pain. 
into places of conflict. And the Thessalonians, of, above all, knew the pain of living this new way of trusting in the Lord of life, the Lord of all peace. Uh, they were being persecuted left and right, and they understood the power of this peace. Do, do we? Do we trust it? Do we believe without having to see it first? May Jesus' um, love for the disciples, his first circle, remind us his circle today that there is always peace for us because that's how and who Jesus is. It also will make us peacemakers because once you've seen it, once you've seen it and experienced it, now it's time to remind others and to offer it to others, to be brave enough, courageous enough, bold enough to be able to speak that. May God bless you with peace untold in these hours. Because there are so many places today, this day, uh, where there is a threat to peace. I, I believe that's how I want us to close our time uh, together. Uh, for those who are mourning, for those who are scared, for those who are grieving, for those who feel lost, uh, for those who are angry, um, so angry that they can taste that bitterness and that hurt for everyone whose peace is threatened. Lord, you walked through walls out of love for the disciples. And it is your intention, I believe, to break through whatever we have erected to protect ourselves that we might know that peace is ours too. You understand you lived the horror and the terror. So you understand just how brutal it was for those first disciples to watch what happened to you, to feel powerless, to do anything about it, to be too scared to try. You must understand where we are in our world today too. Not sure if we can make a difference, sometimes too scared to try and finding ourselves broken again. Yet your intent for us as the prince of all peace is that we would know those who trust in you, those who believe that you are the Lord of all, the risen Savior, our brother and our friend. It's your intent that we would know peace in every circumstance, that we would be whole that we would know not only salvation, but we would be whole and holy. May we never forget, remind us by the power of your Holy Spirit at every turn that all things are possible with you, O oh God. Help our unbelief. Answer the questions that we have in doubt and make us stronger for our sake, for the sake of our families and our neighbors, our communities, this nation and your world. May we understand that you long to give us peace in every moment, in every circumstance, in every way. May we trust believe and receive that promised peace. In the name of the one who is the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. My friend, I'm thinking about you today, and I am praying that you know all measure of God's love for you. Be kind to each other. We all going through something. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, a regular time. Bye.